going to discuss, of course, is the rule against perpetuities, where we are standing in front of several dozen experts, mm -hmm. and we're going to stretch back into our brains to one L year property law. Um, because I think listeners are going to love this, and dear commenters, don't tell me you don't love it. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. I love it. So the rule against perpetuities, you think, is this super ancient doctrine, and it's not really as ancient as you think. The line that all the law students know actually is less than 200 years old. Um, uh, basically, you know, no interest is good unless it must best, if at all, not later than 21 years after some life in being at the creation of the interest. Which obviously, you know, we don't need to explain it much further than that. I think that's pretty clear. Uh, but look, the point of the rule against perpetuities is this idea that you didn't want dead people controlling property forever with all sorts of weird, creepy little ideas they had um, that you know, would basically extend to dead hand control of the property. And so, but at the same time, you want them to have some control over their property and how it gets distributed after their death. And so how do you balance those two interests? Getting rid of dead hand control with, you know, some interest after you're dead so that you're not just, you know, saying YOLO and setting it all on fire um, when you get real sick. Um, so that's the rule against perpetuities. And the idea is that you can control the land uh, for 21 years, basically after someone you can name uh, has, has died. And so what this turns out to usually mean uh, is your, hold on, hold on, hold on, let me, uh, what this usually means is that it's not a particularly big deal because you're naming the people who you want to leave something to, um, or perhaps, you know, when it gets tricky is when you're naming an unspecified future grandchild of some kind like that. So let me give you some examples. Uh, I am leaving this desk to Adam for the rest of his life, and then to the first of Adam's children to reach the age of 25 years old. That doesn't work. That violates the rule against perpetuities, because perhaps, um, you know, all of Adam's future, you know, current children, he doesn't have any, but, you know, they could all die. And then I die. Uh, and then Adam has another kid. And then Adam dies. And now that kid's going to have to reach 25 years. That is post-21 years in the life of anyone who's in existence at the time the will was probated. And so what you do is you just chuck off that first kid to reach 25, and now all of the property simply went to Adam, and then it's whatever Adam's will says. All right, that's the easy part. And that, that's the easy part. That's the easy part. The question I'm most interested in uh -huh. is who is the youngest descendant of Prince Charles? I mean, uh, King Charles. So I think, and there's somebody in here that will correct me if I'm wrong, Princess Lilibet of Sussex, who is the youngest child of Meghan and Harry. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so that is, so Princess Lilibet plus 21 years, assuming Princess Lilibet is the last surviving of the currently living descendants of King Charles. So why King Charles? This was actually really common to use Queen Victoria at the time. It was Queen Victoria and all her descendants because there were a million billion of them. Um, and so someone was going to live, and that was like extending to the longest period possible, the longest survivor plus 21 years. So King Charles, not surprising, they used the Rockefellers, the Kennedys were popular at a time. And so you basically want a famous family with a whole lot of people in it, which is getting harder and harder uh, to some degree. So um, one last example, because this is the dead hand control part to some extent. I want to give the property to a dom so long as alcohol is not sold on the property. If alcohol is sold on the property, then it goes to David. Well, nope, that's not going to work either, because what if the alcohol is sold after Adam's dead? So Adam's given it to someone else, the alcohol sold, and then David's like, aha, there's alcohol being sold on the property. Now it comes to me, and it's 50 years later. That's the type of dead hand control we're trying to prevent with the rule against perpetuity. And imagine it's not alcohol, but like, you know, <clears throat> horse and carriages must be used on this property. Right. If not, the property reverts to someone else, and like it's a totally obsolete technology or something slaves must be kept on this land and something morally obsolete. 
Um, so that is the purpose of the rule against perpetuity, and I'm just so excited that Disney went there. Yeah. I thought they went for Prince Charles just because they have castles. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, what family would you use? What family would I? That's a that's a really good question. I mean, oh, well, as Kardashians? A, no, no, Romneys. <laughs> Romney's <laughs> Have you seen their Christmas cards? <laughs> <laughs> the wide lens they have to use. Unbelievable. Yeah, you would totally go to Romney's. 